how to change someone's mind. You might think, impossible. I can't change their mind because I can't control their thoughts, so what are you talking about? Well, there are ways that you can influence someone else's perception and beliefs. And if you don't believe me, just think about con men. How do they do it? How do they get in and build trust and sway people to do things that they normally wouldn't have done? They know the tricks to changing someone's mind. Now, I hope that you don't put these to use in your life conning people. That's up to you and your ethics and your karmic reality. But I would love to teach you today four simple things that you can do to be more influential with others so that you can change people's minds or sway them to see things from your side of the fence for the greater good of everyone. If that sounds good, then I want you to stick around. But first, please check and see if you're not a subscriber here yet, will you please click that subscribe button and the little bell. The bell gives you notifications just when you log into YouTube that we've dropped a new video and it also sticks us in your feed. So you'll see maybe when we have dropped a new video for you. All of our videos are focused on one simple thing. We want you to have lower stress in your life and more success. So if that sounds good to you, go ahead and give us a thumbs up as well and stick around. I'll be right back with those four ways that you can change someone else's mind. Guild coaching, more success, less stress. I loved debating in high school. I was on the debate team and I loved finding an issue and learning about the issue. Usually we were assigned issues and we were also told which side of the issue that we had to argue. And that exercise in the debate team helped me learn how to influence people. And there are four key elements of being influential. This can help you to sway someone to see a political issue from your side. It can help you to bring someone to a new realization or understand that the way that they've been going may not be in their best interest. Um, it is also, these, these four things are also what con men use to trick people into doing things uh, that they want. So I sincerely hope that you don't take notes today and use it in that way, but that's on you, not on me. Um, I'm sharing this information so that you can bring more light and love into the world in a way that really lands mentally with more people. Okay, so speaking of taking notes, if you um, haven't already grabbed a pen and pencil, I've always got mine right here, uh, a pen or pencil and some paper, please grab that. And if that's completely nowhere around you, no worries, you can still take notes. Just open the comments section here and do it. It helps to solidify your learning when you write out or type in what you're hearing. It'll just help you remember it better later. All right, are you ready? Four ways. Number one, you have to keep your message simple. This is something that I teach. I, I coach salespeople, I coach sales staffs, and I used to be in sales as well. And it's the number one thing that I teach them. The thing that I want you to write down in your notes is a confused mind says no. A confused mind says no. So you have to keep your message really simple. The more simplistic your message, the easier it is for the people who you're delivering it to, person or people, um, it's easier for them to identify with your message and be able to understand it. You can add detail as you go, but begin with a very simple message. Keep it simple, brief, short. That's number one. Number two, you have to come at it from a place that is interesting to them. Nobody ever <laughs> has gotten very far by saying, I want this and you do it. I want this and you do it. This is what I need, do it. Unless it's a boss and you know you have to do things that your boss wants. But if you really want to inspire someone, even as a boss, or especially as a boss, if you want to inspire someone to do something, you have to come at it from a standpoint of what is in it for them. Figure out what is in it for that person. Find an angle for that person to attach to so that they see their own personal goals being met or their own personal comfort being increased, something along that line. 
they ha need to have some skin in the game or some interest in the outcome. So the way that you give them that interest in the outcome is by presenting it in a way that is very appealing and speaks to their desires. All right. Number three. Now, this is going to sound strange, possibly, but you have to be confident. However, overconfident people don't get very far. So you need a humble confidence, a humble confidence. You are strong in what you're saying, but you're not going to railroad over them, right? So there's a humble confidence. You understand your message, you understand what you want to say, you understand what's in it for them, and you present it in a way that's solid. Soft, humble, but solid. You've got to have that level of confidence. Just think about anyone who's tried to tell you something, instruct you something, um, give you directions. If they didn't seem confident, you didn't really buy it. I remember I pulled over for directions one time. I didn't have a good signal and I was kind of driving on country roads and I was like, look, I'm trying to get to this place and I don't have a good signal for my GPS and can you help me? And there were two people who tried to give me directions. The first one was like, well, I think it's this and that and maybe, hey, why don't you try? And I'm like, lady, I'm out here on a country road. I want to try something. I want the right direction. And then that very helpful, sweet soul exited. And the man who was there was like, no, don't do that. I know exactly where you're going. What you need to do is go up here. He gave me like the weirdest directions ever. It was like, you're going to see a pasture of cows on your right and then a purple barn on your left. So that keep going straight. Like he gave me a lot of instructions of what I would see when I didn't need to turn. And, but then he gave me turn by turn instructions. He was so confident, so detailed, but he was humble. He didn't trash the lady. He was like, I think you might want to try to blah, blah. He said, mm, I don't think so. I know where you're going soft. Mm, I don't think so. Humble. I followed the instructions, got right where I needed to be. I really appreciated that guy. I wish I could have like called him and told him thanks, but thank you. Energetically, I'll send him my thanks. All right. And number four, I think this is the key to all of it. It's really the glue that holds everything else together. You do need to keep it simple. You do need to come from a standpoint that means something to the person you're speaking with or people. You do need to have that humble confidence. The glue that holds it all together is empathy. And how can you express empathy to people? I'm doing it with you right now. I'm looking you straight in the eye. I'm presenting things in a way that is acceptable to you. I'm trying to reach into the, the places that emotionally can tie this together for you. Eye contact, tone of voice, proper use of pauses, understanding where that person's coming from. Empathy can also be achieved when you find a common ground. Oh, you're from that place? I'm from that place. Or, oh, you're from that place? I've been there, it's lovely. Find some way to connect with them that can put you on their level so that they feel like they're relating with you empathetically. Also, one other empathetic tool I just thought of, wasn't on my notes that I've been using, um, is to use a person's name. And you don't have to use it like at the beginning of every single sentence, but um, let's just use the name Bob, that's my husband's name. If I want to say something and have him understand that I'm really connecting with him on it, while having eye contact, I can say, you know what, Bob, this may be really interesting to you. He's going to feel the energy through my eye contact. He's going to hear the energy through the delivery of his name. And then I found what's in it for him. This might be really interesting to you. Ah, oh, so I piqued his curiosity and all of a sudden there's that empathetic energy there. So those are your four ways. They all go together in one little package. Your four things that you can implement to help change someone's mind, to influence people going over them one more time. Number one was keep it simple. Number two, find out what's in it for them. Number three, be confident but humble. And number four, have active empathy. Be a part of everything to hold the whole thing together. If this has helped you at all, give me a thumbs up. And if you didn't already, click the subscribe button. 
and that bell so that you will be a member here on Guild Coaching's YouTube channel. We'd love to have you. And you'll also get notifications whenever we drop a video like this to help you live a life with lower stress and more success. I'll see you next time.